well, you know, other folks could pop in and join us, um, but we've got a delightful crew here tonight. And um, also folks can tune in after the fact, uh, watching the show on YouTube or checking it out on the podcast version. Um, so if you're not here with us live tonight, you know you're here with us eventually. So we're so glad. Um, and I know that tonight is going to be an amazing conversation. Um, basically what'll happen is I'll tell you a little bit of my story um, and then I'll introduce Lior and then we'll just have a great chat for um, a bit of time. Tonight we'll talk about kind of Lior's story and everything amazing that's going on with Flick. Um, and so I'm so excited. Uh, so, um, my name is Allison, and I am a leadership coach and a consultant. I am based in Denver, Colorado, and I have a company called Poppy Lead. And it is basically a leadership development company working with new entrepreneurs, um, aspiring or new managers, and really just leaders who are kind of feeling a little out of their element or like, holy cow, I'm in charge now, you know, what do I do? How do I run this business? Um, so I love coming in and having those conversations about confidence and having those conversations about self-awareness and sort of having our own backs um, through those sort of leadership challenges. So I decided to uh, launch this talk show and um, have been really excited about sort of how it's growing and just love sort of this container of highlighting someone's journey um, and really getting to see someone come into their leadership. Um, because I believe that we're all leaders, whether we have a team of people or, you know, things like that, like we're still leaders of ourselves um, and leaders of our friend groups and our families. Uh, and so we all can be confidently in charge. And I love kind of helping people, you know, experience that uh, within this space. Um, and so tonight we're going to be learning more about Lior's story and um, her experience of being confidently in charge. Uh, so some of you know her on this call, um, some of you don't. So I will do a brief intro and then we'll dive into conversation. So um, Lior is currently a UCLA psychology student and the, uh, she's a senior, going to be a senior. Nailed it, all right, love it. Um, and she is also the founder and editor-in-chief of Flick Editorial, which is a, I have it here, because it's such a beautiful description, um, a digital platform for creative minds to showcase their unique voices and facilitate the exchange of diverse ideas. Um, and this amazing team has grown to over 20 members and they've actually published over 60 articles by a huge variety of voices since May. Um, so new kind of crew, but like just amazing things going on. So I'm super excited to hear kind of the ins and outs of that. Um, I just gave a little intro. I probably missed some things, um, but do you just want to give us a quick overview of, you know, who you are? Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, so you basically covered the educational background. Uh, I was actually a transfer student, so I started in community college here in Irvine. That's where I know Nas from uh, on this call. And we transferred uh, this past year. I transferred to UCLA and I loved it there. I only got to spend six months there, which was really sad, but uh, I loved the campus. I loved it there. And I think the best part of having that opportunity was really getting to branch out in terms of, even though I'm a psychology major, I got all of these internship opportunities in different realms that weren't specifically psychology oriented. Mm -hmm. And I really learned that I have a passion for marketing and I really like mm -hmm. all of this editorial space. And I got to meet a lot of really cool people being centered in LA. Uh, so I had a lot of really neat opportunities to really network and meet all sorts of different people. And how Flick was really started was that I was writing for another website. And when I found out that the website was founded by a senior at UCLA, I was like, wow, if she can do it, why can't I? Uh, so I really took this time during quarantine when I feel like it's really easy to be negative and go into your shell and just be like, okay, I'm just gonna be in bed and watch TV all day. Mm -hmm. I just really took it upon myself to take this time and really be creative and get a start. And I'm so lucky that I have such amazing people around me that were so willing to help and contribute. Uh, and I have such amazing writers. We're, 22 now on the team uh, in terms of writers and graphic designers and I'm starting to build out a social media and marketing team as well So hopefully that grows a little bit more as well, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. 
Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like you have grown this experience, you know, and it's, it's so incredible to come from that place of like, oh, if they're doing it, like, why, why am I not doing it? I can totally do it. Um, and so that sort of leads to like, did you always have aspirations of like founding something or being like entrepreneurial in this way? Actually, not at all. I mean, like I grew up loving Shark Tank and loving watching other people do it, but I don't think I ever believed that I could do it myself. And uh, so that was a big change for me, just really leaning into my power and learning to take initiative. I think that that's something that really like flipped a switch inside of me that I went from being really a passive person to being an active person and mm -hmm. thinking like, yes, I can do it. Like, why not try? Uh, so the, the short answer is no, I didn't always think of myself uh, as having this entrepreneurial uh, mm -hmm. thing inside of me. But I think that going forward in my future, like I, I can envision myself in a leadership position from here on out. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like you've kind of found this, this, this calling, even if it didn't seem like, seem like it, you know, from the beginning, like that's really a cool sort of leaning into this journey and just sort of like taking advantage of what's happening and, you know, finding ways to roll with it. Also mentioned sort of like not having the confidence or not having the um, sort of being that, 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 that person who wants to start something big. Um, so sort of what was that that process that you mentioned like from going to that sort of not confident place into this like well if she's doing it maybe i can do it too place um i think that it kind of started when i realized that something within me needed to change if i wanted to accomplish certain things uh i think straight out of high school i applied to a bunch of colleges and i was like really disappointed that i didn't get into a lot of the places i wanted to and for me that was like oh i had such good grades and i did all of the things right and so i was super disappointed like why am i not achieving these things uh, and i just realized that it was because i wasn't putting myself out there i was like doing everything by the book that was like right but the part that really set me apart eventually is taking initiative and doing things that are out of my comfort zone so like i said it's not something that comes to me naturally so every time i wanted to say no like i just forced myself to say yes like you never know what's gonna happen and i was just tried so that was like really the big push for me i think that when i started college i was like okay it's time to shape yeah. up it's time to try things and it took me time but I think that like, I just apply to everything. I say yes to everything. Every time I get an email with a cool opportunity, I'm like, okay, I'll try. And it's not always successes and it's not always good things. And there are obviously hurdles that come along the way, but I think that putting myself out there, number one, even when I want to say no, I say yes anyway. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of makes me think, it makes me imagine of the Jim Carrey movie, the like, yes man, where he just like says yes and ends up doing all these wacky things. Have you... Has, has anything wacky occurred? Have you said yes to any absurd opportunities? Ah, uh, I'm trying to think of like, nothing really absurd. I've said yes to opportunities that were like unconventional in the sense, like I got an opportunity to apply for an internship at a company that was only four people. Uh, mm -hmm. That was something that was like, what am I gonna do there? Like, I yeah. don't belong, like all of these things, but it ended up being like one of the best opportunities I could have had. And I had a really great time there and I made such good connections and I was able to go to a lot of events and meet a lot of people and I'm still in such good contact with the people that I met there. So I think that just, yeah, even this website, like that's something crazy. I mean, I put it together in two weeks. I didn't think that I would be able to do it at all. I came up with the idea and then I was like thinking on it and I was like, do, am I sure? Do I want to do this? And once I like reached out to the writers and the graphics people and I was like, okay, who's on board? I thought I would get maybe one or two yeses and I got 12. So I was oh super excited with that. And I told them, I was like, okay, we have two weeks to get this together. I'm doing the website design. I'm doing everything. And I didn't really have any experiences in any of these realms. So that was a little bit crazy for me because I was just doing something from scratch. Yeah. yeah. During that process, did you like, were you pretty gung-ho and, like, motivated the whole time, or did you come against, you know, challenges in those very early stages of starting? Um, I think that the, I definitely did have challenges, but I was very much motivated to push past, and, like, I'm very uh, goal-oriented. I like to set, like, short-term goals, so for me, like, two weeks was, like, something realistic, but I can tell you that I didn't sleep that much during those two weeks. <laughs> I was very, my mind was, like, churning all the time, so mm -hmm. I, 
I was really busy, uh, but I enjoyed it so much. I think that being creative is something that's so exciting to me. And I'm like working full time right now. And I was a full time student at the time when this was launching. So I think that I love to be busy. That's something that puts a fire under my butt is just yeah. having something to do all the time. So there were definitely challenges in terms of like website design. I don't know anything about it and like mm -hmm. learning how to do SEO and learning how to market like my own website. It's like all of these things that I had no idea how to do, but I just joined a bunch of webinars and talked to people and messaged people on Facebook and on LinkedIn and was like, Hey, can we talk on the phone? Can we do an informational interview? Can you teach me? So I think that there's definitely been hurdles and there are still hurdles like every day. So, uh, yeah, but it's been so fun. Oh my gosh, I love that advice of like, I, I like to live my life by the Marie Forleo-ism that everything is figure outable. And it's sort of that belief of like, okay, I'm gonna make this website. I don't really know much about web design or SEO, but like, it's figure outable. I'll like, I'll look up some articles. I'll reach out to some people. I think that is such a critical aspect of leadership is being able to say like, yo, I know what I know. And I know that I can be like an awesome writer. I know that I can organize these aspects. I don't know as much about this, but like, I know I can figure it out. Um, and so then there's that self-educational aspect of like, okay, we're learning about SEO. Um, my favorite way to do that is I start following like Instagram accounts that are like within that vein or like Twitter feeds and things like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm taking in this information, but yeah, that's such a critical skill of like, you know, coming to that challenge and just sort of having that motivation um, to drive through it. I had this journey of sort of figuring out like your confidence in this place in this leadership and sort of not getting in that place that I think a lot of us go to of that cocoon, um, that like comfort zone that like, oh, I'll just say no. Cause like, what like so many things could happen if I say yes to that opportunity. Um, and so like, I want to mention, um, I want to bring up a part of an article that you actually wrote for Flick um, that is called What I Wish Someone Would Have Told Me, which um, I'll probably link to it in the recap of this as well, uh, just because you should totally read the whole article, everyone. It's a great article. Um, but you said, self-love is a process. It's about reducing the need for validation from external audiences and truly having confidence in yourself and your abilities. It's identifying, oh, it's about identifying that the journey may be slow, but by focusing on short-term goals, you can better yourself one step at a time. Um, and I thought that was just so beautiful that it's not this like external audience um, that you need. It's really, that aspect of like yourself kind of showing up for it. Um, so I want to ask about kind of that self-love process for you and like how did you sort of tap into like you know loving Lior into this like leadership position? I think that a big part of it is surrounding yourself by the right people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it for a lot of years I was supported like I obviously have always had a very supportive family, but just like externally in terms of like friends and people that I surrounded myself with weren't always like the most positive influences. And I feel like when I went to college and I just really started surrounding myself by like smart intellectual people who like, I felt like I really like to use the term like hype women, <laughs> like, my, like have a really strong group of like girlfriends that like build each other up and just like really support each other and our goals and like are really driven and have like these passions that we're exploring. I think that really being in a space where you feel comfortable being able to share yourself with other people and have those people that support your ideas and like want to help you grow, uh, that's something that's huge. And I think that even though I said it's not like an external thing, like you don't need to get validation from anyone other than yourself, but surrounding yourself by with like positive influences gives you like the space to learn to be creative and like really find what you like. And I think that that was something that was really important for me, just surrounding myself with the right people. Mm, I love that. Yeah. It's that like, we become the people that we surround ourselves with kind of aspect of like, yes, I mean, I know I've got my hype ladies and like, I need them at times. And like, I've got, um, there are times where I call on Mitchell and I'm like, you know, I need pumped up. And like, that's honestly one of my favorite things to do is I sort of love being like, 
the pump you up sort of person. Um, but yeah, it's so critical to have that. And I think um, for me, it's been helpful to say like, you know, I to like treat myself like I would treat one of my friends. Like if one of my friends came to me and was like, hey, oh my gosh, I sent out this blog post and like nobody commented on it. Nobody really looked at it. Like I'm a terrible writer. I should never do that again. Like I start thinking about the ways that I would respond to my friend and be like, oh my gosh, no, like you're incredible. And so trying to do that, like seeing people do that for me convinces me in my brain of like, oh yeah, I deserve that kind of attention. I deserve that kind of like love and praise um, and celebration. And so it's sort of finding the balance of like bringing that in to yourself. Um, 100%. I think also like a big thing for me was uh, when I started working and like doing internships and things like that, I think it was super pow powerful to have female bosses. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's something that really helped me be like, wow, like when I was growing up, every like boss or like person who I saw was always like a man. And like seeing women in positions of power was something that was like really empowering because yes, it's leadership, but I feel like it's leadership done differently. And I think that that's something that made me be like, wow, I could see myself doing that someday. So I think also just having the mentors aside from just the friends, like they kind of become friends in and of themselves. But I think that just seeing that was something that was so exciting for me in terms of like learning to just like love the person that I am and see like, wow, I can be like that in the future too. I think that's huge. Yeah, that's, oh, that's incredible. That's such a great point of like mentors are, oh my gosh, like my, my mentors in my life, I'm so grateful to them because there are aspects and like learning that is occurring and things that I'm figuring out. But like sometimes it's so helpful to go to someone and say like, I've never done this before. Like you, you know, you've been in business for a bit here, like, you know, getting that advice, getting that guidance um, and talking to people. I agree. That is huge. Um, and so important to have as you're building up that self-confidence and overcoming all of those challenges. Um, I would love to ask and talk about, um, when we spoke earlier, we talked about sort of the importance of like practical experience um, or like sort of like figuring out, you know, the process of figuring out what you want to do and like ignoring the rest. Um, so do you want, would you speak a little bit on kind of that process of like how how did you sort of chisel the stone of your life into this you know amazing founder editor in chief kind of position? I think that uh, this is advice that I give my brother all the time and like my friends that something that is so key is especially for someone like me who's interested in literally everything. Like I can sit and listen to TED talks on probably any subject known to man. Yeah. Figuring out what you don't like is so key. Like I was sure that I was gonna get a PhD in psychology, that was gonna be my plan. I was gonna go into the educational psychology sphere just to be specific. And I was so sure that that's what I wanted to do. And I like engaged in research and I worked in labs at UCLA and I just like saw how miserable all the grad students were and how like none of the research that they were doing really had specific practical applications and I was like I cannot see myself working in a lab for the rest of my life and fighting for publications and all of this stuff that used to seem like the world to me uh so I think that that was one big thing that I checked off my list I was like no not for me and that's when I started realizing like even though it's something that I wanted to do it's okay to let go of like an old goal and like make a new one uh, so I just really started exploring other things and I applied to internships in HR and in marketing and I loved marketing. I think marketing was what really called to me the most and it was something that was really unconventional. Someone told me they're like, but you don't need like a degree to do that or you don't need to go to school to know how to do that. Yeah. But I feel like finding the things that come naturally to you, even if it's not like you don't need to study math or learn how to code in order to do it, is something that you like lean into the things that you're good at. And I found myself being good at those things. I really enjoy the whole marketing space and I just think that it's a different way to educate people. Like I was always steered towards traditional education because I really liked working with people and mentoring, but I think that you can do that in marketing. It's educating people about a product, about an idea, it's different. 
Um, so I really like that. I'm currently working in recruiting as well. So that's also been something that's really helpful with the website because I have to recruit people to come and uh, join and be part of the team. So I think that all of my experiences have really come to a peak with the website because I've really used like in terms of education, I, my education at UCLA has exposed me to so many different people with different backgrounds and different expertises and all of these things. So I get to integrate all of those amazing people into the website. And my experience with HR has been like, wow, now I know how to recruit and how to maintain like staff and like how to talk to people in a politically correct way and like how to get people motivated. And with marketing, like learning how to do the social media and uh, PR, like <laughs> learning how to get people on a mailing list and like how to make a press kit and all of these things that they all have come together with this website for sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It sounds like there's so many, I think you just touched perfectly on like, there's a lot of things that we have to say yes to and a lot of things that we need to like learn like, okay, yep, I'm going to, I'm going to learn these things. I'm going to go. And I think that really drives home the importance of like, you know, saying no to like, the right things. I don't want to like do the PhD. I'm not going to like, you know, sit here and like whip myself and say like, no, you must do this because this is your life purpose and this is your plan. Um, I love that sort of spirit of flexibility of like, no, that's not for me. I'm going to go try this. And then like, I'm going to like, it sounds like, you know, you're so much more vibrant in the things that you're saying yes to um, because then there's sort of this awesome synergy it seems between them of like oh yeah your skills from recruiting are like applying over here and like skills about website stuff are probably helping over here and like through all of this you're sort of learning um about yourself as well um which i think is so cool um do you want to share the story that you shared with me about like the the practical experience and sort of your realization with that oh yeah that was actually a conversation i had with my little brother he told me he's like um, I told him what I do at my job and he was like, but like, you don't need to go to school for that. Like, <laughs> he's like, you work in social media. I'm like, why, why did you, why do you need to be a UCLA student to work in social media? And it kind of made me realize that like, wow, we get a degree, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I think the degree is just the step in the door, but what's going to help us in the end of the day is to start applied experience and like learning on the job and a lot it's I feel like there are definitely jobs where your education matters like if you want to be a doctor go to medical school and get that background knowledge but mm -hmm. I think with a lot of things it's like learning on your feet there's no like major in learning how to recruit and there's no like if you're a psychology major you can continue to go to school and do that and get a PhD but other than that you can apply that to literally anywhere you go mm -hmm. so it's just like taking the knowledge and getting that step in the door when you get an education but I think that you can literally work in anything and learn as you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, such a beautiful, beautiful lesson of just like, I think there's that, that experience aspect too. You mentioned earlier, like, you know, going to college, I can't remember if you mentioned it on the call or if I read it in the article that I'll link to, but you mentioned like, oh yeah, I didn't get accepted to any of these schools. Like what a tremendous failure this was in my life. And sort of having that shift of perspective of like, actually, no, like, this allowed me to go to community college and it allowed me to meet these incredible, amazing people. And it allowed, like, this was my true path. Um, and I think there's such a, a beautiful aspect there of sort of claiming that perspective shift um, and having that realization of like, I can learn from any situation. I can learn from like, like there's always kind of a lesson to be, to be had. Um, I think that's a beautiful sort of, leadership aspect too of like oh that lunch didn't work like now I guess I learned that like that didn't resonate with people I have now given myself this gift of like all the ways like I know that didn't work so woohoo check that off like I have other options to try um going forward um and I want to kind of bring us into sort of like the present day with Flick and like we talked a little bit about sort of you know you're starting it and your your journey through that process and so we spoke a bit about um kind of honing into creativity um and sort of like acknowledging that within your life so um could you just like maybe give us that connection between um you know how 
flick exists and sort of the like honing into creativity aspects? Yeah, I mean, I love to write, but I love to write, I love to read, I love like everything in terms of the editorial space. It's something that I've always been interested in. Actually, when I was like in fourth grade, I made like my own magazine and I made my family read it. And love it. It. <laughs> I've always been really into writing and reading. And being creative for me is just having, first of all, I called myself, I can't remember exactly what I said. Um, oh, like I said that I was a curator of powerful voices. Like I felt like a curator in a museum. Like I was just picking out people that are so talented and I was like, I want you and I want you and I want all of your stories. Uh, and a big, huge thing for me was diversity. Like I, uh, on other websites that I was writing for, helping out with, I just, there was a big lack of it. And I'm really proud that like of our team, 85 are, 85% 85 are people of color, minorities, and uh, we're also like 80, actually 90% female. So we're like a very like minority driven group. And I think that all of these like fringe like stories that I'm able to get from people are just so empowering. Like we have uh, an article that went like, I think our biggest article to date was called I Woke Up and Forgot I Was Black by uh, my friend <laughs> Gerald <Gale. laughs> And it was such, such a beautiful article. And Within 24 hours, I think 3,000 people read it. It was it was crazy. I and that was like within our first, I think, three weeks of launching the site. So it was very very new, and it was very topical with everything that was happening right now. So just being able to like, I feel like it's such a privilege to be able to read all of these stories and to be able to edit and to contribute and to curate like the graphics team and find artwork that matches and like I feel like is appropriate for each piece. I think that it's just getting to be creative in so many different forms and helping other people be creative as well. I have some friends that said that during this time, they've been so unmotivated and they've been lacking creativity and they've wanted to write or they've wanted to do all of these things, but they haven't really had like a reason to. Mm -hmm. So I think this website just gives me and gives other people a reason to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write today. That is amazing. You're like, you're providing that space for people. And I think what a beautiful mission of like the diverse array of voices. Um, and I love something else. I don't have the, the email pulled up, but you gave me like this description about like the family being connected through uh, like the loves of creativity and inclusion. Um, and just like so many words that create such a beautiful kind of culture and vibrancy. Um, so I, I'm curious if you had to describe sort of the the whole the full editorial um in maybe like three words of like what you want people to experience with it how would you describe it oh, three words that's so hard i'm sorry you're a words person too i shouldn't put you on the spot like this three paragraphs please oh uh, i'll try and do like a sentence okay i can do like a few words uh but i really want them to delve into a story. I think that there are so many different types of people that like write for the site and so many different, like, just, I feel like every time I read one of the pieces, I really am in that person's world. Uh, one of my really good friends, Jasmine, wrote an article recently about how her family uh, is undocumented and her sister graduated from Harvard this past year. And the whole family had to drive to uh, Boston from California to go to this graduation because they couldn't fly. Uh, and I think just like hearing stories like that, it really puts a face behind the name of so many different issues and like helps people really have empathy. Uh, so I hope that that's something that people gain, but something that I wrote on the site, like in our like about us uh, description is that I want us to be able to give like the fun and the sad and the like happy and just everything in between. I want to make people laugh, but I also want to make people cry. Like, I, I think that just feeling something and making people feel some kind of an emotion is like the trigger for me. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. It's such a, an honest and genuine mission, I think, um, to acknowledge that like, you know, we are humans and we have like a human experience. And I think, yeah, writing and like the whole space of getting into that article with someone you're so right it's that like you're entering their world you're getting to know their story you're engaging with them that's such a beautiful way to sort of amplify um you know your learning and your experience 
And yes, the article, oh my gosh, I woke up and forgot I was black. That article, I read it and like immediate, like I, I just had such, such a journey kind of while reading it because it's, you know, taking these two voices and they're sort of just sharing their honest experiences of what life is like um, and talking about like the generational traumas and like all of this sort of experience that's wrapped up. It was really powerful. Um, I'll also link that article in the recap. Um, if you haven't read it, highly recommend. Um, but that's such an awesome, you know, journey and process to, to share with people about, you know, come read a story, get engaged um, with this. Uh, I do want to ask a question sort of about, um, you know, like, so what I was getting at with the last question was sort of kind of getting the essence of like what, um, you know, you're creating with the, with the platform. And so I'm wondering sort of the culture, like as you're inviting people to join the team and as you're sort of creating this like larger, um, you know, collective of voices, what are you creating? Like, what are you keeping in mind with the culture of it? Um, I think that one big thing is that I tell every writer, every graphic designer that I want to give them creative freedom. Uh, so that's something that is big for me is that I am not someone to censor. I'm not someone to take out parts that I don't like. I mean, like I change up, like I tweak the grammar and I tweak, tweak like some of the phrasing here and there, but I really um, am interested in the merit of people's ideas. Uh, and every, the process for me on bringing on new writers is that the first month I'll have them do like a guest article. And then if it like, I like it and they enjoy the process and everything, then I have them come back like for once a month. And that's like the tendency that all the writers write one article per month. That's how it's been going so far. Uh, so I think for me, like I said, the big thing is just their ideas. I like when people have, are different. <laughs> like I brought on a guy recently that his writing is super different than everyone else's on the team. And I was like, wow, like, I think that's something really cool to bring to the table. Or like, sometimes I'll find people on LinkedIn that will write like posts that like get a lot of interaction and they'll be like super funny. And I'll be like, hey, do you like write anything other than LinkedIn posts? Are you interested in that? Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, that's a big thing for me. Just uh, spotting like talent. I am just really interested in people with different styles, even with the artists, like none of them have a similar style. They all do things in their very own way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just, I'm interested in bringing in a little bit of everything. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. I mean, I think you're highlighting, you know, unique stories and giving people that freedom. And so I think it also makes so much sense as, you know, you're bringing, like you're not just saying like, oh yeah, you know, we showcase a diverse voice. Like you're actually really bringing that in and allowing people to shine, um, which I think is so beneficial, especially in the news space of people, you know, feeling and worrying about like censorship of articles and what kinds of things are getting posted and what's being published by like large things. And so it's so incredible to hear um, that you're really just giving space to like, hey, you've got this idea. I agree with 98% of it, but you know, I'm going to like provide space for you to like you know, share this, your style isn't exactly the same, cool, like, there's still room for you here, um, so that's, that's really cool, um, in terms of sort of, like, managing the diverse array of everyone, you know, like, you, you mentioned, like, now that you, you see yourself in leadership positions, and, like, you see yourself kind of, like, you're coming and learning these skills, um, so what is that process like of sort of working with, friends and working with you know people and I'm sorry if anyone on the call is you know working with the team but I'm just curious about sort of the process of like becoming a manager or a boss. I think on the one hand it's really hard and on the other hand it's awesome because I think that with friends there's a lot of mutual respect um so there's a lot of respect for me from their work and there's a lot of respect from them for like me and like what I'm doing with the website uh but on the other hand like I'm a friend first, like I'm always going to be a friend first. So like there's something I don't necessarily like or don't necessarily agree with. Like I need to be really smart about the way that I say that and like express my concerns about an idea because I like want to be respectful, number one, and I never want to make anyone feel bad about an idea or like a change that I want to have happen. Uh, so I think that learning how to be politically correct is something that's really, really important. 
Uh, and learning how to be sensitive to people and their needs, I think that, uh, yeah, and managing like 22 people is not easy. It's a lot of work. I have like 80 messages like within an hour of like just random things that I need to handle like all the social media accounts and all the people on the team and all the different group chats that we have I actually split to make it more manageable I split up uh, all of the writers and graphic designers into teams so there are four teams with four writers each and then there's uh, five people or four people also doing graphics so I have like these bite-sized teams so that mm -hmm. I like can communicate more directly with like a smaller team. And then I also have people helping with marketing and with other stuff. So that's kind of like on the side as well. Uh, yeah. So I just try and break it up into manageable like amounts of content per week uh, so yeah. that I can handle it. I try and keep like max like six articles per week because after that, like I start getting really overwhelmed and finding guest writers is something that's also been a process like, I look on Instagram for people with businesses or people with cool stories and I'll like message them and be like, Hey, like, what do you want to write for us? Or I get emails sometimes from people that have seen the site and are interested in writing as well. So it's been really interesting and it's definitely a learning process and I'm learning every day as I go, but uh, I think communication is a huge thing and just having respect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That sounds like, I, I can't imagine. I manage myself. Um, I'm, <laughs> rocking the solopreneur show and can't imagine, um, you know, balancing that many things and balancing, you know, all of that at once. That's, I think it's, it's, it sounds really smart that you kind of taken this and almost mapped it into like, okay, we've got our different like teams. This is how we're doing it. Did you ever imagine that you would be at the head of this large kind of multi-team company? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. What has been kind of the most surprising part um, for you of, of finding yourself here? Um, I think the most surprising thing at the beginning was the fact that so many people agreed to help me. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, we're not doing anything. Like, it's all on a volunteer basis. So mm -hmm. I'm not able to pay anyone at this point in time. And so mm -hmm. I was like so amazed by how many people want to help and how many people want to contribute and how many people want to give advice. And all of this is like, just out of the willingness of people's hearts to just do a good thing. So that was something that was so exciting and surprising for me at the beginning because I was kind of pessimistic. I'm like, I don't know if I would do it. <laughs> and, uh, so I think that that's been a huge thing for me. Uh, and I've just been so surprised by the amount of like positivity we've gotten around this platform. I get like messages, I get emails, I get calls. And like every time I like see someone I haven't seen in a while, they'll be like, wow, I checked out your website and I really love this piece. So that's been something that's so cool. And I think like I said before, it really starts a dialogue. Like somebody will be like, oh, I read this piece about this. And like, can we talk about it or something like that? So uh, I've been really surprised by like how high quality also the content has been. When I chose a lot of these people, I was like, I think you're an awesome person and you have something to say, but I hadn't necessarily seen that many writing samples from each of the people. So I think that just the quality of the content has been insane and yeah. people that I work with have all been so amazing. So yeah, yeah. Oh really my gosh. surprise. <laughs> That's so, it, it truly is amazing. I mean, reading through, like, I, I was like, oh yeah, this person, like, they, they've probably been doing this for a really long time. And then I'm like looking at the dates and I was like, holy cow, this started in like May. This is like, this is a fresh new thing. And seeing just like the pro, like the sort of what's going on with it today. Yeah. It's this, you know, sort of beautiful, um, creation and, um, yeah, that process of sort of saying like, okay, I don't, I'm taking a chance, you're my friend, like, um, it's so cool, I think, when you provide people that space, like, sometimes people truly surprise us in these incredible ways um, with, with things that we're learning. Um, and so I, I wonder, I'm just curious, because, you know, you sort of, you, you did this process of going from that place of being, you know, less confident, wanting to, you know, stay in the comfort zone, saying no for fear of, you know, things that would happen. So, um, you know, what is your sort of advice to the person who's in that space right now um, and is maybe feeling uncomfortable in their present situation, but unsure of what to do next? Um, this might be a little cliche, but like do one thing that scares you every day. Like even if it's something really tiny, like, I, just like reaching out to someone or 
just mm -hmm. applying for a job or just doing something, even like start with one thing that scares you a week. Yeah. Just learning to say yes to all sorts of things. Uh, one huge, huge advice is something that I think is super simple to do is to sign up for mailing lists. I think a lot of the opportunities that I've gotten have been through signing up for all these random mailing lists that I thought I was never going to use. But somebody's like, hey, do you want to give your email for this thing? And then I'll just be like, sure. And I've gotten a few internships. I've gotten like uh, reached out to, like, I think I met you through a mailing list. Like yeah. I, all of these different uh, opportunities that can come about just by signing up to get some emails. And instead of letting them go to spam, like every once in a while, just open them and see what's inside there. Uh, and just putting yourself out there. I think that just doing it a little bit at a time. I mean, it's not going to happen super naturally at first, but um, I've, just forcing yourself when you want to say no to say yes, at least some of the times. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I find so much joy and benefit in like mailing lists that I'm a part of. I've definitely gone through phases of life where I've like been on mailing lists and not paid any attention to, you know, what's coming and I'm not feeling in alignment with the person, but there are some like, you know, even just popping in every once in a while and seeing what people are up to. I think like on the one hand as a business owner and entrepreneur, like it feels super great to like support other people who are sort of on the journey. Um, and I, I like to hope like maybe, you know, things will all balance. Like I go to people's events, they'll come to my events and we like love and support each other. I think there's such a, a beauty in that. Um, so I wanted to kind of wrap our, our session here. I can't believe that we're like nearing the end of our session, but um, is there anything that's like burning desire in your heart to say, or like a favorite, you know, thing that you've learned um, or wisdom that you would like to share with anyone? Um, something that I've learned about myself, not just through the website, just over the last few years is that I can do more than I thought I could. Hmm. Uh, I think that really like the sky is the limit and I think that a lot of the barriers that we have are barriers that are like mental like we just feel like we can't do certain things mm -hmm. but I think that we just need to try and I have done a lot of different things that I didn't think I would be any good at or like I, a classic example I took a coding class and I do not like computers and I never thought that I would take a coding class it was something I had to do for school and I did it and I like set my mind to it and I was able to get through it and like do it even though it wasn't something that I thought that I could make through. Uh, so there's all these different kinds of things that I think that there's just a lot of mental barriers. I think step one is just trying to knock them down and being like, okay, this is imaginary. Like I, I'm going to try anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that learning how to knock down those personal barriers and learning to surround yourself with really positive people that support you along the way. Uh, anyone who's not really supporting your dreams isn't necessarily someone you need to have in your life. So just learning to find a good space for yourself mentally and also a physical space that makes you feel comfortable. Mm. Remember that was one of the things we talked about initially was that process of like, you know, if she's doing it, I can do it too. And I think, um, yeah, oftentimes like the things that get in the way of our own success is ourselves. Um, and, you know, like you've mentioned, you can always learn, you can always kind of expand and move forward and grow. Um, and so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for sharing just, you know, your, your journey with us and kind of taking us through that process. Um, you tell us all how we can like plug in and stay tuned to everything that's going on. Uh, we post articles every Monday at 9 a.m. So you can tune in after that time every Monday. And we have a new column that's going to be launching next month. And that will be every other Friday as well. But uh, so far, it's just Mondays at 9 a.m. And you, we have a newsletter that I send out every Sunday that recaps the articles from the week before in case you missed them. So you can definitely subscribe to the newsletter. And I'm really active on Instagram. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, I'll send the, the handle in the chat. Awesome. Um, and we also have a LinkedIn and a Facebook. And I'm starting to build out Pinterest as well. So you can follow us on all the social media platforms and just stay tuned. But I think the biggest thing is follow on Instagram and check the website every Monday. Cool. That's so exciting. And yes, everyone, check this coming Monday. 
for an article from, uh, from yours truly. Um, they were kind enough, delightful enough to publish a piece I wrote about the five myths of leadership. Um, so there are five myths that you might be falling for um, that a lot of us get caught up in uh, about our own leadership. So I want to thank you so much, Lior, for joining us tonight. Um, and I will definitely include in the recap all of the ways that we can continue um, to support your mission and stay tuned uh, with everything that you're doing. Um, since there are some folks here who are new to my world, um, I also wanted to let you know that um, I am a leadership coach. I offer a variety of things, including something called an inward leadership deep dive which is an energy leadership index assessment. We kind of get to know how you naturally show up as a leader, and then we go into that in an intensive one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so I am doing 20% off on that all through August um, as a connection with the coaching tr training school that I went through. Um, and so that is exciting things that is happening in my world um, that I will share with you all in the recap. But um, yeah, I'm just so delighted to have had Lior here tonight with us. Um, and I'm excited for this kind of space and container of this Confidently in Charge talk show. Um, I would love if uh, you tuned in tonight, if you would like to um, continue tuning in. We have a show the first Thursday and the third Thursday of every month. Um, and so we'll be back again on August 20th with Aiden Iob, who is the founder of Mind Medication. And we're going to be talking about mindset, um, maybe some spirituality, and also like holistic leadership. Um, she just wrote this incredible book full of like positive mindset training hacks. Um, and so we'll be talking about that as well. And then uh, September 3rd, we're going to be talking with Jen Yuhin of The Pledgettes about uh, the wage gap and how we can invest in ourselves and sort of claim some financial mastery um, and really show up as leaders for ourselves in terms of our finances. Um, then uh, the last one I'll mention is September 17th, which is the day after my birthday. It will be a super fun, exciting episode uh, because my best friend Lauren, um, Lauren Aguilera Brown is actually going to be interviewing me. Um, and so we'll switch hats. I will take off the talk show hostess hat and be the interviewed guest that night. Um, she'll be joining us from London in like the middle of the night for her. So it'll be exciting to, to have that chat. Um, but I'm just so excited and so honored uh, that all of you decided to join us. Um, I hope that this conversation gave you, you know, little snippets of the fact that we're all leaders. And even if, you know, you don't come from this childhood aspiration of like, oh, I'm going to be the founder of a company and I'm going to, you know, you, that doesn't have to be in you from day one. Um, like leadership is very much available to you and you can learn from any and all things that are occurring. Um, and so I'm so thankful to each of you for tuning in and I hope you all have a wonderful night.